plan from day one when you are coming to Canada decide in your mind what you want to do if you want to come to Canada and come and help drivers make a lot of money in Canada hi guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Obehi I'm a social worker and a content creator based in Regina Saskatchewan Canada and on here I share my life experiences as an immigrant and as a social worker and sometimes lifestyle content I don't really do immigration like that but I always talk about how social workers can come to Canada if you're a social worker anywhere in the world and you want to move to Canada I also share some information around that hoping that you can pick something from me and I can also learn something from you and today guys we're going to be talking about things that are happening in Canada things that immigrants are experiencing in Canada I must tell you the truth since I moved into Canada in I think it was in 2023 no 2022 the tail end of 2022 so it's been about a year that I moved to Canada I must tell you that things have changed drastically things have really really changed things are way more expensive now and I, I people are finding it hard to get jobs and stuff like that and this is beginning to um, make immigrants change their minds some people are leaving some people are just you know regretting making the move but I must tell you that in the midst of all these that are happening there are still some hard ballers yes there are still some ballers some people that are making cool cash making money their money might not be able to buy them what you could buy them two years ago or last but they are not broke, they are still making money. And that is because they have strategically put themselves where they will always make money. I would speak for myself. Since I moved to Canada, I have not struggled. Glory be to God. It's not because I know the way around or I sabi with my video. It's just because I have learned my lessons as a new immigrant. At the time I was a new immigrant, I've learned my lessons and now I am in a better position. Like I now know the things that I'm supposed to do to help me be at an advantage. And I just want to share some of them with you. But if you are in Nigeria, you're in Africa, you are in anywhere in the world and you're trying to come to Canada, there are some things you should know. You know, there's some things that you should just be aware of. Just so you are in a strategic position when you come. Now, there's some Nigerian groups, like some WhatsApp groups that I have seen that people join and most times when people are coming to, coming to Canada the question they're asking is how can I freeze the goosey how, how, how can I freeze my okra and bring it how can I freeze jello fries for two weeks and bring how can I bring my palm oil people are not bothered about how to get a job what job is in demand things like that because personally I feel like when you're traveling now the first thing you should think about is where do I want to land where am I landing are there jobs there for me, whenever I travel out, the first thing I think about is where I'm going, what do I want to do there, and where I'm going to land, the state I'm going to land in, the province I'm going to land in, they have that good thing. People don't think about that. Now, when I moved to um, America in 2016, I just went blindly. And I'll tell you that I regret doing that because that cost me four years of my life. Yeah, in retrospect, like looking back, I'll tell you that what, what happened that four years led me to where I am today. But I feel like that four years was a waste because I did not do my research properly before going to America. Only went off what someone had told me and that was what I ran with. Like I didn't do my own research. Because when I got to America, after losing some amount of money, as in good amount of money, I lost money as in so many things I did to menial jobs from delivery to Uber to like name it any dirty job you can think about I did it when I was in America and that was because I did not plan before going to America I went to America blind so when I was leaving America and going to the UK I went strategically I thought about it in my head and told myself that I am now moving from America and going to the UK. I must not be stupid again. I cannot go to the UK now to go and be stupid. So while I was getting myself ready for 
my new journey, getting myself ready for moving to the UK, I did my research. Now, what was the first thing I did? I made sure to check for the in-demand jobs in the UK, a job that I know that whenever I finish school, I'm going to land a job immediately. That was what I did. So when I was checking, there were truck drivers, um, they were looking for truck drivers, social workers, nurses, doctors, general health care. Um, they were looking for um, engineers, tower electricians, stuff like that. So very minimal jobs, like complete blue collar jobs and then healthcare jobs. Those were the jobs that were high in demand. I thought to myself, nothing, I could do nothing, but I didn't want to do nothing because I was already in healthcare. I was a healthcare assistant at the time. And I didn't want to do it because it was telling so much of my body, my back. Like when I go to work, I'm bending, trying to help residents and all that. So I knew I didn't want to do that anymore. So I told myself that, okay, so what are you going to do? So I found out about social work. And then I applied to a university, University um, Liverpool Hope University in the UK to study social work. So while I was in America, I did my interview because you have to do interview to get into social work in the UK. So I did my interview, did everything, got admission, and that was when I went to the UK. So I went strategically. I went because I know that after, after doing that social work course, I was going to get a job. Now, I am saying that to say this. A lot of people come to Canada without a plan. Like you are coming to Canada, you have not made your plan, you are bothered about where, what you eat, what you will buy, what you will travel with. You don't know what the job market is like. You don't have a resume. You don't have a plan. You don't know what, what you want to do. You don't know what you want to get into. And that's where you begin to fail. So if you are coming to Canada, the first thing you should think about is, what is that thing that I can do immediately I come that will make me money? So at least you have your POF to say you don't have to start spending your POF. You have to think of that thing that we do in maybe you come and start preparing yourself so that when you come, you can get that job immediately. Now, I have I know a lot of people will say things like not everybody will be a nurse, not everybody will be a social worker, not, not everybody have to go into healthcare. But they are truck drivers now. They need truck drivers. They need people that will climb um, electric, electrical masts and then, you know, like all these towers. Like they need blue collar people who always have jobs, right? But people don't always think about that. People don't always get prepared. Most times you hear people say like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm from Nigeria. Oh, I'm doing project management. I'm doing cyber security. Make I tell you, the people that are here that have done project management, cyber security, just analysts, they have not seen seen job. In 2018, 2017, 2019 in America, it was for people who were seeing jobs, like every day, every day, people were getting jobs as project managers, as business analysts and all that. But they couldn't keep this job for a long time. But people will get jobs and in six months they love the jobs. Why? Because they are not delivering on their jobs. I'm not saying that you cannot land a job and do well on a job and excel on a job as a business analyst, as a project manager or whatever. But I'm telling you that healthcare, eh, truck driver, um, welder, all those jobs, they are cheats, cheats, you know, like cheat jobs. It just makes your life easy. You get it in time. You, I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. I know I might be sound, I might be all over the place. But I'm just saying that if you are coming to Canada just so that you can live a good life and you don't have to struggle and you don't have to stress, make sure you come targeted. Have a plan. From day one when you are coming to Canada, decide in your mind what you want to do. If you want to come to Canada and come and truck drivers make a lot of money in Canada, in the UK, in America, truck drivers, they make a lot of money. Do you know that if you are in Nigeria and you go and learn how to drive truck? You learn, you study drive truck, like you can drive the truck properly, you know you can drive truck, right? When you come to Canada, you now go to like a school, because you already know how to drive truck, it's going to be hard for you to do like a short, uh, the, the, I, don't, I don't remember what they call it, I can check and put, put it somewhere on the screen, but I don't know what they call it, but you can do that course and then get your license to drive truck and you will get a job like immediately, immediately. Do you understand? So instead of spending your money and going to do business analysis, it's already saturated. 
all those things are already saturated and the jobs are not really there especially in canada there are not so many companies in canada that that are recruiting those jobs like okay someone told me that um they had a business analyst trainer and the trainer told them that they should apply to 600 jobs in a month how many project management jobs have they did ask yourself that question before someone will tell you that you should apply for 600 in a month how many days so when you are coming to canada please come targeted have it in mind look for the high in demand job like if you are going to change career let it be a career that when you change that day that day after you are finishing your course the next day you will see work that's my own opinion another thing i want to say is that for immigrants this is just my own opinion for immigrants one person in the family should be helping especially in this time and age one person should be in a high in demand job healthcare truck driving um, welders carpenters like one person should be in that high in demand field the one that a lot of people will not do you know they always live like there are some jobs that a lot of people will not do that they will leave for us those jobs somebody in a family should be in that kind of job i'll give you an i'll give you my reason say for example you find out that Regina is not working for you and you want to move to another city or Toronto is too expensive you want to move to another city let it be that you're looking for one job do you know why I say let it be that you're looking for one job it is easier for if it's easy for a nurse a social worker a doctor a truck driver to get a job so at least that one person will always have a job to hold the fort while the other person is looking for a job let's say something happens and there are retrenchments or they begin to sack people or one person loses their job that other person who is in healthcare or in that very high in demand position will always have a job to hold the fort till the other person is able to get a job this is just my two cents i'm not saying you should do this thing it might not work for your family but that has always helped me so i'm going to say that this is what i do if you want to do what i do this is what i do another thing that i want people to know is that when you are traveling abroad please make sure that you don't settle in a city before you get a job do not settle in a city before you get a job let your job determine where you will stay i'll give you an example for myself and my family we wanted to stay in saskatoon but we did not see job in saskatoon so Saskatoon was a temporary place for us. And when we got a job, we moved to Regina. And we started settling in Regina. That is how I expect that it will be. You will not go and tie yourself in a city and then you will not get a job and then you will not begin to struggle. Or another thing is, what people can do is, let the wife, say, get a job in Regina or be in Regina and the husband can look for, like spread your tentacles, look for a job anywhere. Look for a job anywhere and at least settle down. Be financially stable before you now begin to like look for like buy a house or whatever. You know, that's just my opinion. I'm not saying you should go with my opinion. That's my opinion. So yes, Canada is tough. A major reason why Canada is really tough is the monopoly. There's a lot of monopoly in in, in Canada. Like there are only two airlines, Air Canada and WestJet. There are only a few grocery stores. If you are buying from any grocery store, you are still buying from only three major chains. There are only three major chains of grocery stores in Canada. So that is making like there's a lot of monopoly, and that's why things are expensive. Things have gone up the roof in Canada. But you can try. Your story can be different. You don't have to be broke. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to be hungry. You don't have to feel depressed in Canada. If you make all these plans before you come, always make a plan. Have a plan. Let your plan drive you. Let your plan drive you. Another thing is you have to be very, very vigilant. Be on your feet when you come to Canada. Be ready to move. Whatever happens, be ready to make a change. I, for one, I am a very strategic person. If I try something and it's not working, I'm opting for the next. I don't just think. I don't sit. Like right now, I am looking for a better job. And if that job happens to be inside the bush, or guy, they go find an zero because at the end of the day, money is involved. Money is important. So yeah, you can live a good life in Canada. 
I'm not saying you should do nothing. I'm not saying you should do social work. I've not said that. But all I'm saying is, if you are very strategic, you can enjoy in Canada. Please don't go and put yourself in Toronto and be struggling. Don't go and stay in a big city and be struggling. Look for smaller cities and settle in. Look for a job, settle. Look for a job, then settle. Look for a job and then settle. Don't go and settle before you start looking for jobs. So this is just what I wanted to share. I hope you were able to pick something from it. Um, I know I've rambled a lot. I know I've just been talking. But I just felt that, you know, we need to re-educate ourselves. You know, we need to re-educate ourselves. People say, like sometimes you go on Facebook, people who say, eh, I left, I quit, I quit my five-figure job, I quit my six-figure job, and I'm now working from home, I do business. See, don't allow people to deceive you. If not, you just be paid to mortgage, and you will be broke. Don't allow people to deceive you. When you come, decide what you want to do and follow it through. Don't allow side attractions to deceive you. Don't allow side attractions to deceive you. There are people that are in abroad. They are very cunning and very greedy. So don't allow that one to deceive you. Face what you want to do. If you want to come as a nurse, come here, settle down, do your nursing, and in no time you are making money. If you want to be a truck driver, learn how to drive truck in Nigeria. When you come, you do your certification here. And start driving your truck. If you want to be a welder, at least have the basic knowledge. Learn the basic knowledge there. Come here, brush on your knowledge, and then get a job. Do not come with a mindset that um, it has to be a white collar job. It doesn't have to be a white collar job. Dirty jobs to their money, you just have to be very strategic. Like, spread your tentacles, be open, be open to any option, and by God's grace, Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you're able to pick something from it. If you have not subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Kindly subscribe to the channel. Um, turn on post notifications so that when I post a video, you'll be the first to know. And thank you for your support. Thank you for always tuning in. Thank you for your love. And until we see you again on my next one, have a nice day, guys.